So we just talked through the kind of basic overview and intuition of the maximum likelihood estimation process. And now we're gonna talk about what that estimator is exactly, like what comes out of maximum likelihood. And we're gonna be a little more formal about defining maximum likelihood estimation also. So we're gonna start with a, a, a strong assumption. And we're gonna, that assumption is that the probability density function for a random variable, which we're gonna call y, conditioned on a set of parameters, which is, we're gonna call theta, could be one or multiple parameters in, in that vector theta, is defined by this f, this probability density function. This could be any probability density function, but we're saying we're gonna sit down at the start of our estimation and say, this is the distribution, this is the density function of our data. It can be conditional on these parameters that we don't know yet, these thetas, but we're going to assume that we know the, the kind of underlying shape, even if we don't know the actual parameters that fully describe that shape. And so this function, uh, you can think of it as, as identifying the data generating process that underlies an observed sample. And it's going to provide us with a mathematical description of the data that the process will produce. And we're going to use those different kind of definitions as we think through maximum likelihood estimation. And so just to be clear, we're making an assumption about the full density of y. In some other estimation methods, you might be making assumptions about expectation or variance, some of the moments of the data. Here, we're making an assumption about the full density, where if we're fully describing the density of our data. Uh, just want to point out real quick, we're talking about one random variable, y. We could generalize this to having a whole random vector uh, of, of many y's that have a joint density. Uh, and, and there could be some, some dependencies between those. You can do that, but, but for this course, it's gonna be fine to just stick with this simple assumption about a single random variable. If you're interested in the more complicated thing, you can definitely take a look at that in, in some econometrics books on your own. Okay, so we've got this density function that we've assumed. Well, then the joint density, we normally have more than one data point, right? So we wanna think about having lowercase n different data points. And so then the joint density of n independent and identically distributed random variables, each with that assumed density, is just gonna be the product of of the density for each one of our data points. Because they're independent, the, the, we can just multiply them together. We don't have to consider any kind, of, any, any kind of covariance or anything like that. We can just multiply them together. So kind of the, the relative likelihood of observing our full data set is just the product of the relative likelihood of each individual data point that we observe. Okay, but remember this representation where we're, we're saying kind of why is the variable and we're conditioning on some parameters, this kind of representation suggests that the parameters are known and the data are unknown. But as econometricians, it's usually the opposite that's true. We normally have our data and we want to estimate the parameters that generated that data. And so here we can just simply switch the conditioning. Instead of saying y conditional on theta, let's just say and think of this as theta conditional on y. We're gonna redefine this thing as the likelihood function, but mathematically it's gonna be exactly the same. So the right hand side here is gonna be exactly the same as above. It's just that now instead of calling this the joint density of y conditional on theta, we're gonna call this the likelihood of theta, which is a function of our unknown parameters, conditional on y, the data we observe. So we've just kind of flipped what we think of as being known and unknown, but mathematically the expression is still gonna be exactly the same. That's basically the, the big conceit of maximum likelihood estimation is let's take the same kind of density objects that we're used to working with in statistics and just flip them on their head but, and think about them not as, as being functions of data, the y's, but think of them as being functions of the parameters and the y's as being known. It, it, it seems like a maybe overly simple, but that's basically the whole idea here, is we're just gonna take what we know about stats and kind of flip it on its head to, to get some inference about parameters. So 
Uh, usually though, so, so we've defined this likelihood function, which does just that. It, it thinks about the parameters as our variables and the y as, y's as being known and conditioned on. Well, normally it's, it's gonna be easier to actually work with the log of this likelihood function, uh, which we call the log likelihood function. And the reason for that is, is in the likelihood function, we have this product on the right hand side. Well, just because of the nature of logs, if we log this thing, we end up with sums on the right hand side instead of products. And those are just gonna be easier to work with. So uh, even though we're thinking about this idea of likelihood, likelihood of parameters, oftentimes we're actually working with the log likelihood. And because log is a monotonic transformation, uh, if we think about finding the greatest log likelihood, that's gonna be equivalent to finding the greatest likelihood, or they'll, they'll occur at the same point at least. And so the idea behind the maximum likelihood estimator, which we're going to denote theta hat, it's just the set of parameters that maximizes that likelihood function or and that log likelihood function will occur at exactly the same spot. So, you know, mathematically, we can just say that our, our theta hat is, the, is the, the argument that maximizes either the likelihood function or the log likelihood function. It's really kind of mathematically that, that simple. We define some probability, fun uh, probability density functions. We, we, we either take the product or, or the sums of the logs, and then we find the, the set of parameters that maximizes that expression. Uh, sometimes there's gonna be a uh, kind of a closed form analytic solution to this. And so in that case, it's worth knowing that a, a necessary condition for maximizing the log likelihood is that the derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to each parameter equals zero. So however many parameters we, 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 we're trying to estimate, we're gonna have that many uh, first order conditions here. And where all of those are kind of jointly equal and equal or you know each all of those together are equal to zero that's going to give us the place where you know that, that's going to define what parameters maximize the log likelihood function and it's those parameters that we're going to call our maximum likelihood estimator and so just to reiterate the maximum likelihood estimator is, is giving us the parameter values that maximize the likelihood of, of our data generating process having actually generated the data that we ultimately do observe. That's the basic idea behind the maximum likelihood estimator. One more thing to point out, so far we've just talked about data, whys, just, just data that are data, a y vector that's conditional on parameters, but usually in econometrics, we're thinking about modeling our outcome data, y, as a function of not only these parameters, theta, but also some other data. Like normally, we, you know, even in an OLS regression, we have some y's on the left-hand side and x, x's on the right-hand side. And so if we're thinking of there being additional data, these x's, then we actually need to define not just the probability density function of y, but the conditional probability density function. What is the density of y conditional on both the x's and the theta? Well, it turns out in almost all cases, we can just kind of plug this conditional probability density function in, in place of the, the density function we've been talking about and everything's fine. So we can write down a likelihood function where theta depends on both y and x. And then on the right hand side, that's just the conditional probability density function. We can just kind of substitute those things in, no problem. Same thing with the log likelihood function. We can just kind of plug those conditional x's in, everything works out fine. Um, there, there's kind of some rare cases where that doesn't work, but, but it, it almost always works. And it's so common that oftentimes we don't even think about these things as being conditional. Um, technically, we would describe these as the conditional likelihood function and the conditional log likelihood function, but we're usually just going to drop that term conditional for convenience because we almost always, at least in econometrics, are thinking about having both y's and x's. All right, so that's the idea. I think this is going to make more sense when we start seeing it in some examples. So in the next video, we're going to work through three different examples of actually applying maximum likelihood to some, to some data and some, uh, some density functions that we want to estimate the parameters of.